With us testing Canon's new focal reducer recently, we wanted to produce a quick video talking about focal reducers, how they work, and busting some myths that are commonly associated with them. A focal reducer does exactly what it says on the tin. It reduces your focal length. The best way to think of a focal reducer is essentially the opposite of a teleconverter, which could also be called a focal enhancer. When using a teleconverter, you are essentially zooming in on the projected image circle of your lens. This means you lose light and image quality, but gain the extra zoom. A focal reducer works in the opposite way, meaning you essentially zoom out using more of the lens's image circle. You gain light and can potentially get better image quality out of your lens. Focal reducers are often referred to as speed boosters, which is actually a term trademarked by Metabones for their focal reducers. And because Metabones have dominated this market for a while now, this term has become one of the most common terms for a focal reducer. However, there are few brands on the market that make focal reducers other than Metabones, such as Kipon, Viltrox, Comlight, Aperture, Canon, Luke Adapters, and Zcam. So let's take a look at how exactly these focal reducers are working and what they are doing to the image. Before we get into the focal reducer explanation, let's quickly go over some key terms that are worth understanding, starting with focal length. Focal length is the distance between the point of convergence of your lens and the sensor or film plane. Focal length is one of the factors that make up your field of view. A shorter focal length will give you a wider field of view, whereas a longer focal length will give you a narrower field of view. A lens's focal length will not change regardless of the camera you are putting it onto. This is where the second factor that makes up your field of view comes in, the sensor size. If you put a 50 mm full frame lens on a full frame camera and then a Super 35 camera, the focal length is not changing. What is changing is the amount of the image circle that you are seeing. And this is because of the change in the sensor size. The image circle of a lens is the size of the circle of light that is projected as a cone of light focused from the lens onto the focal plane. The diameter of the circle will change depending on the sensor size that the lens has been designed to cover, such as 43 millimeters, which is the common size for full frame lenses to cover. So if you took both a full frame 50 millimeter lens and a super 35 50 millimeter lens, put them on the same full frame camera, keeping everything the same apart from the lens and then overlay the footage, you can see that the image is identical apart from the vignetting that is caused by the Super 35 lens, not having the image circle size to cover the larger sensor. We can also see this when keeping everything the same in our scene apart from the sensor size. So let's take this Sigma 50mm f1.4, put it onto this C500 Mark II and set it to f2.8. Then swap the C500 out with the C70, keeping the cameras and our subject in the same position and keeping our focus point and aperture the same. The C70 footage is much tighter than the C500 Mark II's. However, if we scale down the C70 footage to match the perspective of the C500 Mark II frame, you can see that it matches up with the C500 Mark II footage's perspective and depth of field is the same. This is because depth of field is calculated without sensor format in mind. For this example, we use Canon's new focal reducer for the RF mount that we looked at in our previous video. When we add the focal reducer to the C70, you can see that the field of view is now very similar to that of the C500. However, it is slightly different as the C500 Mark II has a 38 mm wide sensor, which is more than the speed booster and C70 combo. However, if we keep the aperture the same at f2.8, we can see that the C70 has a stop more depth of field. So what exactly is going on here? Well, let's first talk about what is happening to the focal length of the lens, which is essentially exactly what it says on the tin. It's being reduced. To work out how much your focal length is being reduced by, you first need to know the magnification of your focal reducer. This will be the zero point number on your focal reducer, which for this Canon one is 0.71 but can go as low as Metabones' XL boosters, which are 0.64. You can then work out the reduction by taking the original focal length of the lens and multiplying it by the magnification factor. So if you take a 50 mm lens and put it on a 0.71 focal reducer, the new focal length will become 35 mm. We also know the maximum aperture is changing here too, which we can work out with a simple calculation. 
The aperture of a lens is worked out by dividing the lens's focal length by the diameter of the entrance pupil. Reworking this equation, we now know the entrance pupil of our 50mm 1.4 to be 35 because the entrance pupil of the lens remains constant, but we have changed the focal length from 50 to 35 millimeters. So we can work out that the maximum aperture of our lens has gone from f1.4 to f1. This is where the extra type of light is coming from that people talk about when using focal reducers. So even though the lens is still letting through the same exact amount of light, we are now concentrating the light onto a smaller area and thus increasing the overall brightness. Think of it like a magnifying glass. Next up is depth of field and how that is being affected. Depth of field can be calculated based on focal length, distance to subject, the acceptable circle of confusion size and aperture. Using a focal reducer has changed two parameters here. Our focal length has gone from 50 to 35 millimeters and our aperture has gone from f1.4 to f1. This means that these two changes effectively cancel each other out and our depth of field stays the same. However, what can be confusing here is how the camera is showing this. If you take our C70 and C500 Mark II here, you can see that the C500 Mark II can open the lens to a maximum aperture of f1.4, whereas the C70 with the focal reducer can open all the way up to f1. If you keep everything we mentioned earlier consistent and open up both lenses, you will have the same depth of field across both images. But the focal reduced C70 image will be one stop brighter. This is something worth bearing in mind if you are shooting with either format. When it comes to the differences you can achieve in fields of view, it depends on the format you are shooting in and the physical sensor size of the camera you are using. Crop factor is usually calculated by comparing two sensor diagonals. However, when it comes to video and cinema applications, just the width is regularly used because footage is pretty much always captured in landscape orientation. And then you can adjust your vertical to create wider aspect ratios. To calculate crop factor, all you need to do is take the width of the sensor you're wanting to compare your second sensor to, and then divide it by the width of the sensor you wanted to find the crop factor of. Of course, you can change the standard that you want to compare it to. So for some, a width closer to Super 35 may be better to compare it to. So let's work out the crop factor of the C70 in comparison to a standard 36 mm wide full frame sensor. The C70 has a sensor width of 26.2. So 36 divided by 26.2 equals 1.37. These numbers relate to field of view in the following ways. One will be equivalent field of view, numbers above one will be narrower field of views, and numbers below will be wider field of views. However, when using the focal reducer, your crop factor will change. To work out what the new crop factor becomes when using a focal reducer, you just need to times your crop factor by the focal reducer magnification, which is commonly 0.71 or 0.64. So if we used a 0.71 focal reducer on the C70, it would be a 1.37 times crop times by 0.71, which equals 0.97. So what does all of this mean and why would you want to pick up a focal reducer to use with your lenses? Well, there are a few key reasons as to why using a focal reducer could be a great idea. Of course, one of the primary functions is lens adaptation which will obviously come down to whatever lens adapter you end up choosing. We explained how you got the extra stop of light earlier, and this could either be a pro in scenarios where you need extra light or a con if you've got too much of it. The big benefit of using a focal reducer is the ability to achieve the full frame look on a Super 35 sensor, like the C70, as well as get an extra stop of light to play with. Now, when I say full frame look, what I mean is that you are achieving a wider field of views while using longer focal lengths. This isn't taking sensor design into account, just the optical and sensor size side of things. There are several benefits to using longer focal length lenses to achieve wider field of views, such as less distortion. Using longer focal lengths to achieve wider field of views is only one aspect of what the large format look is. If you want us to go in depth about every single part of what makes up this look, let us know in the comments below. You also hear people talk about improved or reduced image quality when using focal reducers, and this is for a few reasons. Of course, when introducing more optics in front of your sensor, depending on how that reducer is made depends on whether any optical flaws are introduced. But that aside, the other way of looking at optical performance is the increased image circle used. This could go either way. 
Your image quality could be improved as you are now using more of your lens's image circle, thus reducing how noticeable optical flaws are. But on the other hand, you can also notice vignetting, reduced sharpness and increased aberrations out towards the edges of your lens's image circle. But this will come down to your lens's performance and not that of the focal reducers. Even though there are some really good reasons to use a focal reducer, there are also some downsides to using these adapters. First of which is that you are adding another point of failure into your kit. Another piece of kit means something else that can break, which isn't great when you're out on a shoot. Just as we mentioned the ability to increase image quality, you could also decrease image quality. Now this could be introduced with showing more of the image circle as most lenses perform worse towards the corners. And if the optical performance of the adapter is bad, this could reduce image quality by introducing more aberrations, flaring or vignetting. Depending on the adapter, you can also have limited electronic support such as autofocus, IBIS, iris, control and metadata. Depending on the adapter, you can also introduce movement in your setup, which if not locked down, can cause distracting movements when putting focus or zooming. This is why it's always best to secure your adapter down, which could be done a few different ways depending on the camera and the adapter that you have. This is why Metabones produce cine versions of their adapters. These feature a locking EF mount instead of a regular spring-loaded one. This removes play in that EF mount, and if you lock the adapter down using the collar on the bottom of the adapter, you can eliminate all play in the mount. When picking up a focal reducer, you will have to choose what combination of camera mount and lens mount you want. There's such a huge amount of options on the market now. So most Super 35 and MFT cameras with short flange lens mounts will have options for focal reducers. You can even get full frame ones from Kipon that allow you to put medium format lenses onto full frame cameras like the S1H and A7S III. However, one thing I would look out for is the compatibility of your lenses. This could be how the adapter handles the electronic side of your lens, which could affect autofocus, control and metadata, as well as physically not working with a lens. This could be due to mechanical reasons, such as the rear element of your lens protruding too far out that it hits the optical block in the adapter, which happens with the DZO Pictor zooms. If you want to know if a combination works, please comment below and we'll see if we have tested it in the past. Flange focal distance, which is also known as flange depth, is the distance from the flange plane or the front of the lens mount to the focal plane, which is your sensor or film that is capturing your imagery. Each lens mount has been designed with a given flange depth. Take the very popular EF mount from Canon. This has a depth of 44 millimeters and each lens designed for EF has been designed with this in mind. With the introduction of mirrorless cameras, shorter flange depths have been introduced such as Sony's E-mount, which is extremely shallow at just 18mm. This means that adapting lenses has become incredibly popular over the past few years. This is possible with these short flange cameras, but not so much with larger flange cameras. The rule of thumb is, if the system that the lens has been designed for that you're wanting to adapt onto another system has a larger flange depth than the system that you're putting it onto, an adapter should exist. However, if the difference is only a few millimeters, this can be very rare to find an adapter for because of manufacturing and reliability factors. If you're trying to adapt a lens that has been designed for a shallower flange depth than the one you want to use it on, it will not work. It's worth knowing this because all of these focal reducers have been designed with this in mind also. That's why most of them are adapting lenses onto lens mounts with short flange distances. Focal reducers are a pretty awesome tool for filmmakers to utilize, and we hope this video has cleared up some misinformation out there about them. However, if you still have any questions about them, please let us know in the comments below. And if you want to keep up with all the far future content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And thank you so much for watching.